So in preparing to write our first draft of the short story summary, we need to go through several steps. Step one, of course, is read the short story from the beginning to the end. And then step two, read it again. And the second time, begin to mark out the things that seem important, the places you're not sure what they mean. After you read it the second time, you need to think, okay, so what's the story about? Where does it begin? Where does it end? What happens in between? Uh, who are the main characters? Uh, what's the situation they're in? What's the climax? The conflict in the story? How does that develop? How does it resolve? What's the end, the resolution, the conclusion? And as you think about all of those things, you're going to go through the story the third time, and you're going to start basically selecting out the information you need to, to use or you need to know or have available for when you write your, your uh, short story analysis and summary. There's a lot of ways to do it, but I'm going to show you just one way. And the reason I'm choosing this way is not necessarily because it's best. I'm choosing this way because it's very visual and it's easy to see. We're just doing the first part of Mr. Know-All here. And the, the big, biggest and most important question as we begin is, who are the people, where are they, and what do we need to know about them to understand what happens in the story? The story is told by a narrator, and so we need to understand the narrator. So I'm thinking, what do we need to understand about the narrator? So we have, as prepared to just like Mr. Kalad even before I knew him. So I'm going to select that. So we're going to highlight that. And after that, I'm going to put the line number. Different menus here. So we're going to highlight that. Uh, I could not hope for a ca you could not hope for a cabin to yourself. I want to make that. That's in line three and four. Three to four. Uh, I was thankful to be given one, two births. When I was told the name of my companion, my heart sank. So here we go. Uh, the two things we have are, I was prepared to like him before I knew him. I had to stay with him. And what I found out his name, I, my heart sank. I was not happy. And that's, in, I'm sorry, that's line five. What am I doing? Included, it was bad enough to share a cabin for 14 days. So we need 14 days. That's important. How long are they together? 14 days. And that's line seven. I was going from, from San Francisco to Yokohama. That's important. Where are we? What's happening? Who are we with? What are they doing? Uh, and that's also going to be line seven. Uh, but I should have looked upon it with less dismay if my fellow's passenger's name had been Smith or Brown. It's all part of his attitude towards his roommate, which has to do with not meeting him, but having uh, an attitude towards his name. Okay, so we picked that out. Let's go on. I found Mr. Collada's luggage. I did not like the look of it. Okay, Mr. Collada's luggage did not like the look of it. So we're still finding out about the narrator, uh, how he's treating the situation, how he feels about things. Uh, and that's going to probably be important from what we've read, because we've read this twice already. Too many labels in the suitcases, wardrobe trunk was too big, so what he, didn't he like the look about it? He didn't like these things, so that's line 11. This is, this is just the information we're going to use when we have to give evidence of what we say. This is the evidence that we would use to uh, bolster what we've said. I did not at all like Mr. Collada. He says this very bluntly here, so that's good to know. We're getting a clear description of our main character, the narrator. I'm all for English sticking together. So there's Mr. Collada expressing about the, imp the importance to him of being English. Rather, I don't think I look American. Okay, you don't think I look American. Okay, so Mr. Collada doesn't want to think of, he's an American. Whether that's really important, uh, maybe, maybe not. Depends on where we go. British to the backbone, same thing. This may or may not be important, but it depends on what perspective we're going to take. How, is, how important will this be in our analysis? Uh, but we're going to mark it just so we have the information. Mr. Collada took out, to prove it, took out a passport, so he has an English passport. So this is all preparation uh, before we write. We're going to do a couple more paragraphs, and, and then I think we hopefully will know enough about what should be happening. Here, dark skin, fleshy hook, nose, large, lustrous, liquid eyes, long hair, black and curly. Uh, those are actually uh, traditional English uh, adjectives for people who are Middle Eastern uh, or Ar Arabic or even North African. So that could be important. Uh, he spoke with a fluency in which there was nothing English. Uh, 
fluency, nothing English, gestures were exuberant. I'm not convinced. I think we already have enough information about Mr. Noel, but I'll keep it anyway, just because we don't know. Maybe later we'll want to have that information. Okay, all, all of these are basically uh, racist uh, suggestions here from the narrator. How much of it, we don't really need all of this. I mean, certainly, if I just said, the narrator said Mr. Claude describes Mr. Claude as being dark-skinned with a fleshy hooked nose, that's enough right there, just, just that little bit, to tell us that the narrator uh, has identified Mr. Claude as being Middle Eastern, Arabic, or North African, and that he's prejudiced. Gosh, Mr. Claude flashed an oriental smile at me. Uh, we have enough. We don't need that. If after you read it two times you think, oh, really, Mr. Claude is actually a very nice person, and he's very sociable and very generous, uh, and the narrator is just being sort of a jerk, then I would probably keep this information because here I, I, I see evidence. Mr. Claude is very generous. He offers the narrator a martini. The narrator insults the martini, says, I don't really care. And then the narrator says, a very good cocktail. So the narrator likes it. So if I'm thinking after two times that it's important that Mr. Claude is generous and the narrator is sort of a jerk, and I know that and I can tell that from the beginning, then I would select that. Okay? It depends on what your perspective is. That's one of the important things is when you read the thing through, by the second time you should get a, begin to get a picture, start answering questions in your mind. What's important to know? What happens in the story? Uh, how am I going to analyze this as being, what's the most important thing about this? Is the most important thing about Mr. Collada and how he's misinterpreted? Is the most important thing the narrator is sort of a jerk? Uh, what, what's the most important thing about this? And from that perspective, your main topic and then you're going to have to begin, begin selecting out the information that's important. So this is how it goes, and you would just keep going through the whole story and picking out things. The next step I would do then, I'm going to pick all these things out. So boom, da, okay, da, and there, there, okay, there. Uh, and so I'm going to just pick out these things. I have the line numbers, so it doesn't matter anymore that the line numbers don't match up. Uh, because I have the line numbers recorded with the highlight. Now, as I do this, I have all this information that I'm collecting, and the next step is, once I've done that, I want to take this information, and I want to start organizing and arranging it. Now, so I'm looking at this, and I have information. I have prepared this like Mr. Collada. Could not hope for a cabin. So the could not hope for a cabin uh, for yourself it has to do with the trip. So what's going to take? We're going to take that information, we're going to put that... Up here, that goes together. Uh, Mr. Claude's luggage, I did not like the look of it. Too many labels, I did not like that. So that all goes up here with this being about, I was prepared to dislike Mr. Claude. These are all related to this topic here, okay? Uh, cabin, my, whatever. English, this is Mr. Claude, okay? So I have Mr. K. Don't think I look an American. Took out his passport. So these are things Mr. Claude is, it's very important to him that he's English, so these have to do with that topic, okay? This is the narrator's description. And I'm going to make this a topic. Uh, and that's, this is show narrator is prejudiced. Bless your hook nose, long black hair and curly. So, but here is Mr. Cl the narrator being prejudiced. You say, well, he's judging him, and we know that he's prejudiced from that, but then this is the clear information, not just that. But we could take this, and I probably would say, let's take this, and let's put that up here, okay? Now, my very first paragraph is going to be a quick summary. So, the narrator states in the beginning he doesn't like Mr. Collada, the narrator is very prejudiced, However, by the end of the story, the narrator changes his mind because of something that happens at the end. That's my first paragraph. So that describes the name of the story, the author, and characters, the situation they're in, and what changes from the beginning to the end. So my first paragraph is going to be very short. And, I, and most of this information that I have here is going to go in the second paragraph, which gives me the background. How do we know the narrator's prejudiced? How do we know the narrator does like Mr. Colada? All the details for that are in the second paragraphs. So the first paragraph is just story, title, the situation they are in, what is the main topic theme of the story. You could say narrator prejudice, or I could say Mr. Colada is judged by everybody, but he really is a nice guy. 
Okay. Depending on which one I choose, I could say that this is my topic here, that's my topic, or it could be this. But depending on which topic I have, that's going to come out in my first paragraph. So by the end of that first paragraph, four, four to five lines, sentences, I should clearly know if the story's about the narrator being prejudiced, if the story's about Mr. Clouda being judged by everybody, especially the narrator, but really he's a nice guy, and I'm going to prove that he's a nice guy. But whatever it is changes by the end of the story. That's my first paragraph. And then the next paragraph is going to be the background. Okay, so once you have this information, this is your proof. And then the final step in preparing this information before you write is to paraphrase. So example here, he says that Mr. K name, blah, 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 luggage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, now I'm paraphrasing. And the thing is, you want to do this without actually looking at the text directly. You just want to think, okay, what have I collected? What have I got from the story? And then I'm going to start summarizing what's in the story. Okay, so those are your steps. So I'm going to do paragraph one. I give the paragraph one as these things, are these things. And then paragraph two is the background, the things I need to know to understand what happens in the story. Paragraph two and three could be background. And then from there, I begin then with the conflict, the climax of the conflict, which in this story begins with dinner. And then I'm, with dinner, I'm going to do things in a step-by-step. -step. And for dinner, I'll have to go through and select the different steps, what happens at dinner, what do they mean, and I'll start collecting that information with the line, same as here. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'm sorry it took so long, but uh, I'm trying to hopefully give you a clear sense of uh, the steps you want to go through in creating your and in gathering your information and creating your your supporting materials before you begin writing your analysis. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye.